But the same passage can be interpreted two completely different ways. Same words are used, and you can read it in Greek. Reading it Greek doesn't help you at all. It can be interpreted either they're, they're placing you in bondage. I'm just talking about in, uh, in Galatians chapter 2 right now. Place, it can be interpreted either way. They're placing you in bondage by keeping you out, or they're placing you in bondage by holding you in. It's the same word goes both ways. However, when you compare it with this passage, and also when you compare it with the teachings of, of Paul throughout Scripture, where he's continually inviting the Gentiles in to become participants in the Jewish festivals and in the Jewish religion, Jewish faith, you can't interpret this the way it has been done, uh, suggesting that, that this nullifies the commandments of God. Okay, that places Scripture in conflict with Scripture. It's equally, though, interpretable. Is that a word? You can equally interpret it to say that the, the, the sect of the Pharisees that we're having a problem with in Galatians don't let them keep you out of the feasts and the festivals and, 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 the, and the worship. So the other passage I wanted to look at is, is Ephesians chapter 2. Actually, a Jewish... In Judaism, there are 13 principles of exegesis. Exegesis is the, the way we study Scripture. There are 13 basic principles that you follow to study Scripture. The 13th one of them, the final one of them, is that when you have two Scriptures that appear in conflict, you find a third, picture, uh, you find a third Scripture that reconciles the two. Now, this is where we get in trouble with that, because what we tend to do is we say, we say, well, there's these scriptures that support it and these scriptures which, which uh, deny it, and so we find out whichever one's heavier wins. That's not a proper way of understanding it. Not if all scripture is given by inspiration of God. You have to find a way of reconcile the two things, not of, not of, of choosing one above the other. So Ephesians chapter 2, ah, 2, 11 through 13. Good thing I have editing features on the tape. Say, therefore, uh, this is Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. Therefore, remember that you, once Galatians in the flesh, who were called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, but now... In Christ Jesus, you, uh, you who once were far off, far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So if you read through chapter 2, and I'm not going to take the time to go through all of that, mainly because I didn't pray to do that. He talks about the middle wall of partition being broken down. Now what is the middle wall of partition? I've heard taught that it's the it's the, the, the veil that separates the holy place from the most holy place. Have you heard that? Where's that found? It's in Ephesians 2 somewhere. Ah, it's 14, verse 14. He says, Our peace has made both one and broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh enmity, that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, that's dogmas, so as to create himself one new man from the two, thus, thus making peace. Um, the middle wall of partition, as described here, is not what separates Jew from God, is it? It's what separates Jew from Gentile. So in the, in the, in the, te the temple that Herod built, there, you had the, the tabernacle proper, and then you had the Solomon's porch out front of that, and then you had another wall, and outside that wall was called the court of the Gentiles. That middle wall between the court of the Gentiles and Solomon's porch was called the middle of wall of partition, or the wall of separation. So that's what separates Jew from Gentile. That's what's been broken down. That's what Paul is describing here in, in uh, Ephesians chapter two. Are we getting that? Am I going too fast? And the and the Gentile people are encouraged to come in and fully participate in what's called the Commonwealth of Israel. 
It's actually interesting because he says earlier, he says, stop living like other Gentiles. He's telling him to stop living like other Gentiles. Well, if there's only two kinds of people in the world, Jews and Gentiles, and he's telling you to stop living like other Gentiles, who are you supposed to live like? Well, my math's really not that great. But that's why in Romans chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, he says, what advantage do the Jew has the Jew have? What advantage is circumcision? Well, they got this and maybe this and this and that. No, it says much in every way. Not in one little bit is the is the is the Jew lacking or not superior in his his opportunity to have a relationship with God than the Gentile. Every single thing. And the more I've learned about the Jewish tradition, even those Jewish observant Jewish people who completely reject Messiah have a far, far greater understanding intellectually of who the Messiah is than I'll ever have. Because everything that they do that's a practice of the Jewish religion shouts Messiah. Everything about it. 